He's only 23, but he already has a number of records to his credit. He's played in four World Cups, captained India to victory in one, and on several occasions he saved the honor of the Indian cricket team. Today, of course, he's my guest, and his name is Muhammad Kath. Welcome to the program. Yeah. You know, they all say that 2002 was your best year ever. Would you agree? I think so, but before that, uh, uh, when I toured to South Africa with India, A team, second team, I think I would say the form I was carrying, you know, from, from there, it was, uh, I was in my full zone, full control of my, of my game. And after that, just carried, carried through 2004, uh, sorry, 2003, two. But, you know, I suppose the year that everyone talks about is 2002 because there were two amazing times on that year when you actually saved the honour of the Indian cricket team. The first time was the NatWest final in July. You came out to bat when India was tottering at 146 for five. Were you very nervous? Not really because, as I said, I was in good form. I was feeling well. And before that, I played a few uh, small innings. Uh, scoring 40 or 30, uh, making sure that India win that game. I stayed at the end before, before that game. So I was, uh, I was feeling well and it's a matter of how confident you are and how much control you have uh, of your, I mean, uh, carrying through in the final, I mean, with, with your game, how much good you feel, you know. So I was feeling well, I went down there, but it was uh, first final, you know, I was playing for India. It is ner nervous, but uh, 145 or 5 after Sachin got out, I went there to bat. And Yuraz was going well, so I thought... Yeah, except that just think, you had you needed 180 runs to win, and it was just you, Raj, and yourself to do it. That was quite a difficult task. It was. Uh, Your heart wasn't going bang, bang, bang. Because before, before that game, I still remember we had a meeting, and we really wanted to win that game, because... It was like ninth or tenth final. Before that, we had lost eight. There was over nine, nine, ninth final in a row. So we really wanted to win that game badly. The kind of meeting and chatting we had with all the guys, you know, uh, preparing hard for that. In fact, you know, you game. talk about meeting and chatting, and yeah. the world remembers you and you, Raj, talking frequently on the pitch. What were you saying to each other? <laughs> Nothing much to be honest. Just, just sharing jokes and all. Not really focusing uh, uh, just to keep the the mind away just for a while you, know, when you were really sharing jokes during yeah, that tension jokes we see just just to i mean just have fun just play the play the game with the ball on his mind and just 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 do the job that's it i mean not really think win the game it's like play and, and take your so time so the idea was to keep your tension in control that's right yeah just to to just to all, i mean like you are saying we have been playing for like when you were really really young from the 16, and uh, I was the captain when I, when he won the 19 World Cup in Sri Lanka. He, he played under me, so we had a very good, uh, I would say, combination. Maybe I like I like uh, playing with him. You give each other confidence. That's right. And I mean, we were young, and and the the, the kind of when we went to the Indian team, we were like same age uh, group, you know, and we were like quite a but uh, good friends. So well, certainly that, that helped, you know? Certainly that game, July, definitely. the combination worked. I mean, you scored an incredible 87 of just 75 balls. Looking back, would you say that was one of your best innings? Uh, I would say so. Uh, but after that, I played uh, one more inning in Sri Lanka, I think. Uh, but before we go to that one more inning, that, yeah, this yeah. innings was the first big one where you stamped yourself on the country. And the sad part is, your parents missed it. <laughs> yeah, they thought that it's all over after such thing get. They went to see Dave Das yeah. instead. Some movie, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, there was not planned, but they were watching the game and uh, and as soon as such thing getting out, they thought that okay, let's when have fun is it's all over. They didn't know I, that their son was going to win the India. day for India, huh? Sorry. They didn't know you were going to win the day for India. That's why they went to see the see the movie. I thought. I mean, most of the guys in, 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 in India, you know, they, they thought the same thing, that 180, 145 for 5 and it's, it's all over. But, uh, yeah, I think... So the amazing thing, Kef, is just two months later, you did it all over again. This time in Sri Lanka in the ICC Champions Trophy, India was in trouble at 87 for 5 after just 15 overs. And you came out 
on that occasion, did you say to yourself, can I do it a second time? Like I said, in, in, in this game, I would say it's such a difficult game to play, to be honest, you know. And the big thing is, big thing is before you go to play any, any international game, you got to feel well, you know, the, the kind of preparation you do before the game, I think it's very important. And uh, as I said, I was really feeling well, I was in full uh, control of my game that, that point of time. And like you said, 2002, before the NetWest and, uh, and Sri Lanka also. So it was a sort of feeling well and being really confident to do well for the team. That's what exactly happened no, with me. I was this time charged around, up. This time round in Sri Lanka, you scored 111, an unbeaten 111, and got your first one-day century. And the amazing thing is that 55 of those runs, 50%, were singles. Yeah, but we were like uh, five down uh, in just 13 over, and uh, so I had to I had to make sure that I'm I'm there. We, I had like plenty of time to bat, and I was just thinking, just build a partnership with Rahul Dravid, the kind of guy he is. His, he was also in good form. I mean, obviously, he's just been, I mean, carrying through. I mean, since then, uh, since it England. must have taken a lot of willpower and a lot of energy to play slowly and with control. I mean, I, I never thought that I'm only playing. Uh, like the the kind of uh, inning I was I was trying to build up in going to be singles or twos. It just happened. You know, I just wanted to be there and. I mean, no risky shots, you know. You were taking it one ball after another. Th that's right, yeah. I mean, and, and, and Rahul is a, is a kind of player I love, you know, uh, play with. And uh, he's, a, he's a cool customer. I just wanted to build a partnership. And, I mean, I'm <laughs> God being... Uh, God was good. Yeah, quite... Uh, you know, you said both in July and in September 2002, you were, as you said, in the zone. You were feeling good. What happened at the World Cup? Because you only ended up with an average of, what was it, 20.22 per game. Were you not feeling good at the World Cup? No, it's not that. As, as I told you, it's, it's really a difficult game to play, I'm telling you. And, and batting number seven for India, you don't get much time to... to sometimes, like, when, you are, when, you, when you're in there, it's like four or five hours to go and don't get much ball to face, you know. And, and you got to go and just score... Uh, How much of is this is luck? Is luck important? Yeah, it is. And uh, hard work also. It's not that only luck uh, is going to take you long way. I think it's, it's a matter of how you how you prepare yourself, the the working hard also, and, and a lot of determination, and it's like combination of all. You know, right after the first game of the last World Cup, when India lost to Australia, there were demonstrations. One of them was outside your parents' home in Allahabad. Did that affect you? Did that upset you? Put you off your stride? No, that really encouraged us. To be honest, we were like feeling down that time because before the World Cup, we toured to uh, sorry New Zealand it was New Zealand, and we did not do well there. From there, we were we can say low, of, a little bit low of confidence, you know, as as a unit. From and I didn't did not play, did not did not start well first two games. So the played. demonstrations charged you up. I would say so because after that all the guys you know really got together and you know in, in the especially the senior guys uh, did a great job with us. Uh, I must must mention Saurav Gongli and Rahul Dravid, all the senior guys, Sachin, John Wright, you know, all the guys you know sat together and, and spoke about what's been happening uh, last few months. And it's not that something happened back in India, but they were giving you team spirit. That's right. Yeah. The interesting thing, of course, is that. Whilst for many of your colleagues, this was the first World Cup, for you it was your fourth. You'd taken part in three earlier yeah. World Cups, hadn't you? Yeah, under-15 World Cup, then... Uh, the under-19, twice? 1998 in, in South Africa, yeah, and uh, one more after that. In, in fact, Lanka. the second one in Sri Lanka was when you were captain and the team won. Yeah, yeah. So, 1999-2000 when you won the Under-19 World Cup. That is another special great year for you. It's, it's good. It's, it's a great feeling, you know, when you, when, you, when you captain the side and ending up winning the tournament. And such a big one, World Cup. It's, it's like a dream fantastic. come true. Yeah. 
last year, 2003, you ran into a patch of bad luck and you also had injuries. You hoping the 2004 is going to be very different? Uh, I have recovered and uh, I was really disappointed missing the, I mean, Australia. I, I love watching the game, especially the kind of uh, cricket they play in Australia. The kind of place, uh, I like watching the, the Aussie, to be honest, on TV and the way they play the cricket. I respect them. Uh, and in I really fact, wanted to they be... They often say that you are the Michael Bevan of the Indian team. Do you like that? No, I think I'm, it's a little... Uh, I, I don't think so, but I think... Uh, Would you like to be? I'm, I've been trying my best to, do, to deliver my best for, for my country. Not, not with the bat, as long as I, mean, I try to feel also to, to save some runs for the team and, and make sure that I'm helping uh, from, from every angle, you know. And they often compare your batting, and sometimes even the way you look, to Azaruddin. Oh, <laughs> yeah, people say that, but I don't think I've... I've they were you know, followed or, or tried to copy him. You just want to be yourself? Yeah. You want to be recognized as Muhammad Kef, not as Michael Bevan, not as Azaruddin? Definitely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kef, let's take a break at this point. I want to come back in part two and talk to you about the other side of Muhammad Kef, the one that the world doesn't get to see. We'll be back in a moment's time. Stick with us. Welcome back. My guest is the only Indian to have played in four World Cup, Mohammed Kef. Kef, let's talk about your childhood. I gather you spent most of it quarrelling with your sister Uzma. <laughs> uh, not really, sort of, because uh, when you're young and it, it, I mean, it can happen to, I mean, in every family, it's like you want to just have fun and do some naughty stuff at home, you know. Uh, but I was, wasn't able to spend so much time uh, uh, with her because I moved to Kampur when I was uh, 12. Before we talk about what happened after you were 12, your brothers say that as a child you were cute and chubby and your grandfather had a very interesting nickname for you. Honey, yeah. In fact, does the family still call you Honey? Yep, they do that. But they say also that as a child he was anything but Honey-like. Apparently, you were very naughty. Uh, if, they, if they say so, but I thought uh, I was quite n normal, you know, doing the, the normal stuff at home. And But yeah, I mean, with the street guys, you know, the, the, my mates, you know, my neighbor, uh, the kind of uh, friends I had, uh, I used to go uh, school with them used to you know like play in the, in the street and go to the ground also let me tell you what fun. your brother says your brother says he used to quarrel with all his friends and their mothers used to come back and complain to us every evening he said that he did <laughs> yeah one very occasionally but it's not that as a regular basis <laughs> just once a day <laughs> <laughs> once in a month <laughs> and they also said that he hated going to school uh, when I was really young, like, I enjoyed later on, uh, class four or five, you know. Uh, but in the beginning? I, I used to, beginning, yeah, I was like, uh, not comfortable. In you used to cry school. every morning, they said, so that you didn't have to go. Yes. And they say the second he came back from school, when our mother said, go to sleep in the afternoon, he would walk out of the door and start playing with his friends. I never stay at home. I mean, yeah, mom tried, mom is like trying to keep me at, keep me at home and spend time with, with them, with the, with the, with the family, but uh, I was like enjoying myself with the friends, going out and just play. I think the game, if I, if I tell you, you won't know, but I, I, used to have a, had a, I used to have a great time with them. So I never felt comfortable staying at home. You preferred to be outside? Definitely. In the family, I gather it was your mother who was the disciplinarian and the tough one, and your father used to spoil you. Yeah, mother, mother, I think, 
I would say I'm, I'm really lucky, you know, the kind of uh, family uh, I have, you know, uh, got two older brother than me and one younger sister and uh, mom is like quite uh, disciplined and hard working in, in, in our family and she is the one I think I would say that uh, she's special. Special, yeah, definitely. I mean, she really uh, work hard, you know. You feel very make, close to, to her. make sure that we we uh, reach higher in our life. Your father was a Ranji player himself. He played Ranji Trophy for 17 years. Does your love of cricket come from him? Yes, my my father played uh, uh, few years for UP and and uh, 13 or 48. 14 years for railways and uh, it was in my family I mean I used to go with them you know watching watching them how they how they play and, and used to help them just you know feeling the ball and just just to uh, see how they what they do with the bat and stuff I was really young and and uh, start with I was a little shy shy means I was not really enjoying what they were doing but after that I really got inter interested. In fact, your father says he became so interested that he used to find fault with me. And many times he was right and I was wrong. There was later on, very, uh, when I was young, obviously I was like listening to him and I was growing up as a, uh, I was taking him as a, as a real, real coach, like when you, when you, when you And then young, after you a while you started coaching him. You started Not telling coaching. him what mistakes no, he was no, making. No, 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 no. It's like such a, now the kind of, uh, it's like cricket has been changed. The kind of cricket we playing at, at the moment is like big change. If you see the fitness wise, the fitness really has gone up and, and, uh, and, and mentally, mental, it's like, I think I would say it's like quite a big difference. The, the kind of uh, cricket they were playing that, at, at that point of time has uh, become a big change you know, in cricket. You know, you mentioned earlier that at the age of 12 there was a big change. You moved from Allahabad to Kanpur and that's when in fact you joined the Green Park Stadium Students Hostel. How much of a difference did that eight year period make? If I had not gone there, I think I wouldn't be, wouldn't be here playing for India. I think that was great experience for me. and. Uh, I became uh, more, uh, much more tougher, ment mentally wise, because all we had to do, like doing our own things uh, by your own. It's like everything you getting up early in the morning, going to the ground, and uh, and uh, doing the training session, finish it off, come back, have, have breakfast, and uh, we used to like, I mean, the ground most of the time. It's like ground close to the close to the hostel. So finish do finish your training, come back and eat something just just for uh, and relax for, for a while. And then and back again. to training. This was a ground, nobody is there. So it was a very tough discipline. Yeah, I mean it's it's not that we had to go to the ground twice in a day, which is morning and evening. But it, we we used to find some time in the afternoon also to go to the ground and do the practice, you know, uh, the 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 uh, with the, the friends, you know, the the the, the, shop, the kind of shot you want to improve or something like that. You know, you know, all of the people who know you and all the people who write about you say the most outstanding thing about Kef is his stamina, his willpower, and his fitness. How much of that goes back to the lessons you learnt in Green Park? Discipline-wise, it was it, it really helped me, as I as I told you. But I think coaching point of view, I won't say we had a great coaches but I was lucky uh, uh, spending three four years under Mr. Uh, Lakshya Ashtagi who maintained very, very good discipline over there with the among the boys and uh, you know it's interesting you should talk about discipline because your friends say that he was also quite a prankster at school and particularly at Green Park apparently he used to wake everyone up at 5 30 in the morning because <laughs> I, I, I like listening music and uh, we used to get up, we had to go to the ground, like time is 6 o'clock, got to be there. And I used to get up, got up at 5 and put the music on. Really loudly? Yeah, to make sure that everybody is up. And the other <laughs> thing you did like. was you once went away on a holiday 
and you left an alarm clock locked in a cupboard and every night at two o'clock it would go off. <laughs> it just, just, just happened. I did not do deliberate. It was just because I had to catch the train two o'clock and I set the alarm to make sure that I'm up by, th by that time. And it was just, when I came back they were saying that it was like going on uh, for next few days and they were screaming at you. <laughs> having a bad time. <laughs> I gather that along with your personal willpower and discipline, you're also very religious and very careful about observing all your namazes. Is that right? I, I feel good when I do my prayer and after that it's like the feeling I have uh, inside, it's, it's like very different, like very, I feel uh, great after that. So I, I won't say I'm, I'm regular, but I do that whenever I get time because when you're traveling and playing, you don't really get time to do your namaz or pray on time. But, as but a, you as feel a, happy when you do. It means a lot to you. Definitely. I've, I've been, it's been almost eight, nine years, you know, I've been, uh, I've been trying to uh, do my, uh, follow my religion, religious. Uh, but uh, the interesting deeply. thing is that you always say to people, you're religious, but you're not superstitious. I'm not. Not at all? No. Because many cricketers may not be religious, but they're always superstitious. I know. In fact, in our, in, <coughs> in our team, they have, we have some guys, you know, very, I mean, it's, it's not that there's something wrong in it. I, I mean, obviously, that, that's their choice. That's, that's how they, they've been going up and, and, and doing well for, for themselves. But I'm, I'm, I'm not like that. I mean, I'm, I'm very cool. And they say that he controls his emotions. He never lets people know what he's actually thinking or feeling. I don't know. You have a smile all the time that seems to be hiding more than it's saying. Do you think so? I, I maybe. Uh, but how many people know the real Muhammad Kaif? <coughs> I don't have uh, really co close friends. I have few. Uh, my my young friends, like when I was really young and childhood friends, I have few guys. I but there are not trust. many people that you're close to. Uh, not very close. I don't like sharing thoughts and my deep thoughts, you know. And uh, it's alright. I'm meeting them and I have a good time. But I don't like, you know, sharing my my feeling inside. I don't know why. But if I if I start trusting somebody, that time I can do that. But not otherwise. No. Well, today for sharing a little bit of your thoughts and your life with us. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.